So can you tell us who you wrote about and give us a little summary of yours? I can. My dog is uh, Java, the one with the love pillow around her neck. Mm -hmm. um, or I'm her human, depending upon which way you look at it. Uh, Java came to me, she's 10 years old now, and she came to me at about 13 weeks old from a uh, shelter outside of, a no-kill shelter, um, outside of um, Madison, Wisconsin. And I kind of laugh because I think, like, thank goodness it was a no-kill shelter because if I hadn't taken her, she still might be there. I don't know. <laughs> um, and she is one of those dogs, she's one of those once-in-a-lifetime dogs that there are days that I just say, bless your heart, you are driving me up a tree. And then other days when I just, there's no way I would ever trade her for anybody on the planet. She's just been the most incredible dog and the most amazing teacher. And... Um, She's a plot hound, and she came to me very fearful, um, afraid of her own shadow, afraid of my shadow, afraid of leaves, afraid of people, just a very fearful. And at six months old, we were out running in a baseball diamond, as we did many times each week with uh, uh, my greyhounds and, and um, my friends that had greyhounds. And on this particular day, the greyhounds went after her, knocked her over, went in for the kill, and it was a horrible experience. If you've ever been on the uh, witnessing end of a... Uh, a pretty severe dog fight. It's, um, it's fairly traumatic. And she came up fighting. And uh, before that, you know, it was literally just fearful. But you take a fearful dog and then an attack, and um, it can be a, a real challenge. And I didn't have the skills. I didn't know what to do. I was an elementary art teacher at the time. So one thing led to another. I knew I needed to get skills to work with this dog. And um, to learn a little bit more about how to, to help her move through life and, and um, feel more comfortable. Uh, she was very shy around people and very uh, snarly with dogs. And um, I'm happy to say that now, after 10 years, <laughs> she doesn't jump on visitors. Uh, she seldom barks at things going by. Her reactivity that used to just be like snarling and wild, now she kind of goes, yeah. Yeah, well, I would have said something. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's like her recovery time is really quick. And um, she still is not a dog that can be playing around other dogs. It's just, it's not her... But you know what, what plots are bred for? Right? Yeah, they're aggressive hunters. Yes, yeah, they, they, they hunt bear. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and she's stuck with a vegetarian in the city. So <laughs> I thought they called because they thought she was a greyhound. So that's how I end up with this aggressive hunting dog. And I'm in the middle of St. Paul who's bred for, you know, mountain lion, bear, wild boar. And, you know, she sees a plastic bag going across the yard. She's like, oh my God, what is that? I'm afraid of it. Uh, so anyway, that's a little bit about who, and uh, just one of those, oh my god, anyone that meets Java falls madly in love with her. Um, she's, she's really an angel, so she's the reason that I work with animals for a living now. She mm. really transformed your life, didn't you? Absolutely. <coughs> um, it's one of the, you know, it's, uh, I had a, a question that my partner asked me as I was coming here tonight, he said, what are the gifts? that you learned from doing these book signings. And what came up for me was being humbled. The greatest gift that I've gotten is just the humility of remembering that a phone call one day in February in 2001 changed my entire life. I would probably still be teaching art to, you know, eight, nine, and 10 year olds outside of Madison, Wisconsin if Java hadn't shown up. And I wasn't looking for a doc. <laughs> I wasn't even looking. I just happened to pick up the phone that day. And uh, yeah, and so now I travel locally and nationally, and I teach. And it's uh, it, if I if I stop and really think about it, it's overwhelming. And you know, there isn't a day that goes by that I don't thank her for the gifts that she's given me, as well as the thousands of other people that have read our book and uh, lives that she's touched. She's far more famous than I am. <laughs> I would. Each day I thank Java for the impact she's had on my life and on the lives of others. Every night when we go to bed, I take some time to run my hands gently and intentionally over her warm, lean body, and I tell her I love her. She usually acknowledges my gratitude with one simple lick on my arm or nose as we settle into bed for the night. 
Then she flops her 65 pounds on top of my body and nudges me, so I'll touch her more or looks deeply into my eyes and says, I know you love me. <laughs> I don't think I could have learned the lessons I have as well without Java by my side. By being patient with me as I became more aware of and present to the moment, Java taught me to become gentler with all beings and to find that sweet place inside me where love exists and fear can be released. She's taught me to go after what I want in life. For her, it's usually a squirrel, but for me it was living my purpose. As I write this story about our incredible journey together, my sweet girl chews on her bone next to me. I grin while thinking about what we've done together these past nine years and can feel my heart expand another notch. Her muzzle looks as if she's gotten into powdered sugar, and now my head is showing the gray hairs too. Yet our hearts and minds have become clearer, brighter, and more filled with love during the time we've shared. We found a silent wisdom, Java and I, through our experiences together. Java is my inspiration for doing what I do in the world. She's one of the main reasons I am who I am today. And to her I say, not bad for a $40 shelter dog, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can you tell them a little bit about what you do now in the world? Absolutely, yeah. I'm a level three Tellington T-Touch practitioner, which might mean something to some people and to others. They come, like, oh, what is that? It's um, behavior work really for animals, uh, work that's been around for about 40 years, started in the horse world, and it's based on a no fear, no force approach to working with animals. And uh, I'm one of a dozen level three practitioners in the world, and what that means is that I am passionate about this work, and I have been out teaching for the last eight and a half years uh, with T-Touch. And so I teach locally, I teach nationally, I do private sessions in people's homes. Um, I'm also an animal communicator, and so I do sessions for people live or over the phone worldwide, and um, a shamanic practitioner for people and animals, and a life coach. So really what I do is I help people and animals become happier, healthier, and better behaved. <laughs> And some of you may have heard say she has her own radio show up until just about a month ago at the Pet Playground. And we were on her show, and Jenny's been on her show, and it was just a terrific show. And AM 950. It was. It was very fun. And after a year and a half of every Sunday, it was time to let go and make room for what's next. And I don't know what that is. all the recordings yet on your, your website, right? All the recordings are on my website, yes, yeah, all the podcasts, so you can listen to 78 shows <laughs> of me saying, hey, 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 it's time to play, welcome to the pet playground. <laughs> so you, you have your literature here and a sign-up sheet where people can get on your newsletter mailing list. I do. And thank you so much. So